RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents transcribed the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. <laughs> For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Many fathers help their children with their homework. The other day, Phil helped his little girls with their history lesson, and the repercussions were rather startling. More about that later. First, a word from RCA Victor. Again this year, the front page news and television comes from RCA Victor. Now RCA Victor, maker of the world's most owned television, brings you an entire new line of television. And every set is five ways finer for 53. First, every 1953 RCA Victor has the new automatic magic monitor. This special circuit system, proved in thousands of sets, automatically brings in and holds the finest pictures possible. Second, RCA's improved deep image picture tube offers pictures of extra depth and clarity. Third, you get new long-distance reception, better performance even in far-out fringe areas. Fourth, there's no worry about new television stations. At modest extra cost, RCA Victor brings you its new advanced VHF UHF tuner. This automatic tuner has twice the sensitivity of many other tuners. And fifth, this year you have the greatest choice of cabinet styles and finishes in RCA Victor history. Yes, RCA Victor again brings you the big advances in TV, yet prices still start at only $199.95. $199.95. That's the low, low price of the Wayne, big 17-inch television in a handsome table model cabinet. See the entire new line of RCA Victor TV at your dealers tomorrow and ask him to show you why new RCA Victor television is five ways finer for 53 for expert installation and service, ask about an RCA Victor factory service contract. And now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Bill Harris. <laughs> Last week, Phil had his ancestry traced, and he was told that he is a full-blooded Indian. He was also informed that he is a direct descendant of a Mohican chief. He's taken this very seriously and has reverted to the ways of the early red man. In fact, as we look in, he is serving the children breakfast Indian style. Big Indian chief just make them breakfast. Little Indian prince is ready to eat them. Show sure enough and yeah, man. <laughs> Knock them off with Southern Jive. We Indians now. Daddy, can't we please eat now? I'm hungry. No, first I sing them Sioux eating song. Won't you come with me to Redskin Nation? Come see my mom on reservation. She's drying corn for Indian ration. And that's what I like about the Sioux. Uh. <laughs> Start them off breakfast with Indian drink. Oh, Daddy, do we have to drink this? We don't like it. You don't like them good buffalo juice? <laughs> <laughs> now, you drink them this and we have good breakfast that I cook them Indian style. Do you really know how to cook Indian style, Daddy? You betcha. Em. I get them recipe handed down from great-great-grandmother. She was great Indian cook at time white man discover America. What did you make for breakfast, Daddy? We have dried fish, ground corn, scrambled herbs, and venison cacciatore. <laughs> cacciatore? Daddy, that's an Italian dish. We know them, we know them. Grandma had them a couple of dates with Columbus when he landed. <laughs> now eat them fast so you can get them to school on time. Indian never should Good be... Good morning, children. Good morning, Phil. How, squall? Get them up late. Phil, stop with this Indian talk. You've been doing it all week, and it's driving me crazy. Indians don't talk like that anymore. They don't? No, they've been educated, and they talk good English. Yeah, I guess you're right. 
And from now on, I'm gonna talk good English, of which there ain't nobody better at. <laughs> you betcha. A girl's eat your breakfast. I wanna talk to your father. You wish to hold a powwow with the chief? Chief? Phil Harris, do you honestly Please, believe... from now on, we're using my Indian name, Phil Fast Horse. <laughs> I'll thank you to show more respect when speaking to me, the last of the Mohicans. Oh, Phil, just because some Indian named Andrew Fast Horse told you you were a Mohican doesn't mean you have to believe of it. Of course I believe it. Andrew Fast Horse is not just some Indian. He's my cousin, and I believe everything he says. But, Phil, he's just taking you for your money, and... Wait a minute now. The powwow is over. The great chief no longer wishes to talk to the white squaw. You're dismissed on a kahuchi. <laughs> what did you call me? On a kahuchi. That's your Mohican name. It means princess who bulges in the middle from loaded wampum belt. <laughs> lovely name, and from now on, I want you... To... Wait a minute, there's a the bell. I'll get it. That's probably Elliot. I told him to drop over. Hi, Curly. How? Now look, Team Toma, not cook of him. What's that? That's Mohican for welcome pale face with breath like alcohol lamp. <laughs> Come on in. Thank you, oh great chief galloping jackass. <laughs> That's fast horse. I knew it was some kind of a running animal. Girl, are you still on that Indian jag? Ever since you wrote to that phony Indian in Rapid City... Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Cousin Andy's not a phony. He's as straight as the arrow that flies from the bow of that great warrior, Pocahontas. <laughs> oh, Curly, I gotta have a little talk with you. You're being taken by this Andrew Fast Horse. He's just after your money. That's where you're wrong. He's helping me. As I told you, Elliot, he looked up some of the old Indian grants and told me I own a piece of property with oil on it. Yeah, I know. It's in Rapid City, South Dakota. Why don't you go there and look at it? I wrote to Andrew and told him I was coming to Rapid City to see my oil well. But he wired me and told me not to waste my time. Seems my oil well isn't in Rapid City. Where is it? Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> right on Bedford Avenue, across the street from Ebbets Field. <laughs> Look, Curly, don't you realize you're being taken by this Indian hustler? There are no oil wells in Brooklyn. I know there ain't. I know there ain't. Andrew told me to tell everybody it's in Brooklyn so there won't be a rush to the place where my well really is. The place where it really is is a big secret. Where is it? Andrew wouldn't even tell me. <laughs> he keeps the secret beautifully. Phil, have you seen... Oh, hello, Elliot. Good morning, Mrs. Fast Horse. <laughs> The chief here was just telling me about his oil well across the street from Ebbets Field. Mm-hmm. Wonderful location, isn't it? It's the only well in the world where you can pump oil with one hand and catch foul balls with the other. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, you two. You can laugh if you want to. The trouble with you both is that you're septics. <laughs> Change your tune as soon as my well comes in, and that ain't gonna be long now that I sent Andrew the money to start drilling. Daddy, the last... it's time for our Indian lore lesson. You said you had something special to teach us. I did? Oh, oh, yes, yes. Well, I was gonna show you how to dry and moth-proof a scalp, but um, <laughs> we don't have time for that right now, kids. You gotta go to school. Look, put on your buckskin breeches and your war paint and get going. Oh, being Indians, we don't have to go to school. Why? Is it an Indian holiday? Is it the 4th of Geronimo already? <laughs> it's not a holiday, Daddy. We've been expelled. Yes. The teacher was telling us about the part the Indians played in the Lewis and Clark expedition. And we told her she was wrong. You told the teacher she was wrong? Why not? Being the daughters of a Mohican chief, they know more about the Indians than that pale-faced teacher. Well, the principal said we can't go back to school until we apologize. Apologize. This time, the white man has gone too far. <laughs> I'm going down to see that principal and show him that he can't get away now, with now, it. Now, Phil, don't get excited. You're liable to go down there and get in a fight with him and punch him. 
I ain't gonna punch him. Us Indians ain't savages. Now hand me my hat and tomahawk. I gotta go sing. <laughs> With you. I've never seen a man's tomahawk. All right, come on. Shall I bring a towel? No. <laughs> You'll only get in trouble. No, you can't come. When we Indian braves go on the war path, we go alone. Our women stay behind and chant a war song to protect us from the evil spirits. So get your tom tom and start chanting. <laughs> Comes along so unexpected. Makes you feel so disconnected Comes along a love Comes along a love Suddenly, brother, are you happy and excited? Comes along a love Suddenly every dream you've had becomes invited Comes along a love Suddenly every dream you've had becomes ignited you just begin to live Comes along a love Comes along a love Comes along a love Suddenly though you never sang You're always singing Comes along a love Comes along a love Suddenly chimes you never heard before Keep ringing Comes along a love Comes along a love Suddenly night and day Your heart is high and swinging You love He say you live Comes along a love I don't Blue, you're feeling now. You sparkle and you bubble. Big blue bird double. Comes along a love, suddenly petty things no longer seem to faze you. Comes along a love, suddenly everyone around you seems to praise you. Comes along a love, suddenly you discover things that just amaze you. You just begin to live, comes along a love. I don't care how blue you're feeling now. You sparkle and you bubble, you see each bluebird double. Comes along a love, suddenly petty little things no longer fade. Comes along a love, you. Comes along a love, comes along a love, suddenly everyone around you seems to pray. Comes along a love, you. Comes along a love, comes along a love, comes along a love suddenly you, you discover, discover things that just amaze you. You just, you just begin to live, to live and really love really each love. day you live. Comes along a Oh, man, am I going to tell that principal off? I'll give him a piece of my mind. Imagine the nerve of that guy telling Mike Elliot, will you come on? What are you staring at? I'm just admiring the schoolhouse. Reminds me of the time I went to school. Of course, this place looks a little different than the school I went to, but I guess times change. Oh, well, let's go find the warden's office. <laughs> <laughs> The warden's office? Where'd you go, East Larceny High? <laughs> Please, don't make fun of my alma mater. Some of my happiest days were spent at old pickpocket prep. <laughs> Will you come on already? Let's go. Pick the pocket, pick the pocket, pick the pocket, but don't get caught. Rah, rah, pick the pocket. Will you keep <laughs> Now, look, here's the principal's office. I'm going to tell him that my kids knew what they were talking about when they told the teacher about the part the Indians played in that uh, Lewis and Clark clam bake. What makes you so sure they knew what they were talking about? Because I taught them. <laughs> you taught them? Curly, what do you know about Lewis and Clark? Everything. They happen to be friends of mine. <laughs> Jerry Lewis and Dean Clark. <laughs> That's Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin. Oh, Jerry must have gotten himself a new pardon. <laughs> Curly, that's a different team. Lewis and Clark were not comedians. They were jugglers. <laughs> I could have sworn they had something to do with Indians. Naturally, they juggled Indian clubs. <laughs> I don't believe we've hit it yet. <laughs> Look, Elliot, 
before I go in and see that principal, I'd better go home and look this thing up so I'm going to know what I'm talking about. No, well, you don't have to go home. The sign on that door over there says library. Library? Yeah. Hey, the school library should have some books on it. Sure. Come on, let's go in and look it up, huh? Hey, I'll ask that kid at the desk where we can find the right book. Uh, hey, kid, where can I find a book? Quiet, you stupid joke! This is a library! <laughs> <laughs> Elliot, it's whispering Jack Smith. <laughs> Don't let him know what I'm here for because he'll think I'm ignorant. Yeah. What are you doing here in school? Well, um, I'm, um... Well, if you must know, uh... Your principal asked me to deliver a lecture to the children. The principal asked you to deliver? Oh, brother. Oh, lead pants has really flipped his lid. My <laughs> loaded spitballs have finally softened his brain. Don't be sarcastic in the library. He picked a good man to deliver the lecture because I'm going to be talking about a subject that's close to my heart. The title of my lecture is... I know. How to earn a million dollars or why I married Alice Faye. <laughs> that ain't the title. It ain't, huh? How about this one? How I learned to walk again after 20 years of staggering. <laughs> Don't noise that around. I'm saving that one for my book. I'm going to lecture to the kids on the part the Indians played in the Lewis and Clark expedition. What do you know about Lewis and Clark? Everything. Lewis and Clark were a couple of men. Or women. Or one of each. For you, that ain't bad. Look, Julius, I might as well tell you the truth. I'm going into the principal's office and talk about Lewis and Clark, and I don't know nothing about them. So I came in here in the library to look it up. You don't have to look it up, Mr. Harris. They discovered the Northwest Passage. I've been studying about Lewis and Clark, and I'll tell you all about them. Gee, I wish you would, kid. Come on, tell me all about them, and, and I'll remember it, because I've got a good mind. Good for what? You can't remember to take off your underwear when you take a bath. <laughs> How else can you get your underwear washed? <laughs> Let's not carry this any further. I better write the information down for you. Yeah, he's right, Curly. That way you can't make any mistakes. Okay, okay. Write it down. Put it on a piece of paper for me. And look, kid, if you do a good job, I'll reward you by giving you one of my latest RCA Victor Indian records. This is a reward? <laughs> I don't want one of your records. Poor kid, I guess he ain't got no record player. Yeah. I'll sing it for you now. Mama's on the warpath Mama's fighting mad Mama's boiling Yes, Mama's on the warpath Poor Papa, Papa got it bad He's in bad, very bad, awful bad Mama's on the warpath Papa's leaving town Cause he's learned that when Mama's on the warpath It just ain't safe to be around Get away, get away And if he runs away He may live to fight another day before she throws him out You can hear poor Papa yell and shout Take to the hills whenever Mama's on the warpath Papa's laying low Cause he knows that when Mama's on the warpath Poor Papa, Papa better blow Brother blow, better blow, brother blow Mama's on the warpath Mama wears the pants Cause in our house when Mama's on the warpath Poor Papa Pop ain't got a chance Not a chance, not a prayer He's kaput Mama's on the warpath Papa's in a jam And he knows that if Mama's on the warpath He'd better take it on the lamp Better scram on the lamp Poor Papa's got a hunch Mama's saving up her Sunday punch She likes him black and blue so there's only one thing Pop can do Take to the hills whenever Mama's on the warpath Give her lots of room 
Cause as Pop says when Mama's on the warpath, she's really riding on a broom. Boom, boom, boom. She's a witch on a broom. Poor Papa's got a hunch. Mama's saving up that Sunday punch. She likes him black and blue. So there's only one thing Pop can do. Take to the hill. Whenever Mama's on the warpath, give her lots of room. Cause as Pop says, when Mama's on the warpath, she's really riding on a broom. Hey, Julius, write everything down for me? Yeah, it's all on this piece of paper. Everything you have to know about Lewis and Clark is down here. Well, then I better get to studying it, because I want to know all the answers. Uh, well, uh, you haven't got time. It's almost 3 o'clock, and the principal will be leaving soon. Just stick the paper in your hat, and if you get stuck, you can look at it. Hey, that's a good idea. I'll put it right in my hat now. Hey, thanks, kid. Don't mention it. Being a Boy Scout, I always do one good deed a day. Of course, this ain't it, but I'm glad I'm <laughs> Hey, we're all set, Elliot. Let's go in and see the principal. Okay, Chief. Hey, now that I got this information, I know what I'm talking about, and I can really tell that principal. First, I'm going to let him know he can't expel a couple of my Indian kids and get away with it. Mm -hmm. Now, look, here's the office. Follow me and watch this. Let's go in. Right. <clears throat> are you the principal of this school? Yes, I am. And who are you, sir? I am that great Indian chief, Phil Fasthorse. And I want to talk to you. Well, sorry, I'm not in the market for any blankets. But if I'm ever in Albuquerque, I'll look you up. <laughs> I don't have to be selling blankets. I'm Chief Fast Horse, the last of the Mohicans. Surely you've heard of me. Well, you look familiar. I... Oh, of course, I've seen your picture on the hubcap of a Pontiac. <laughs> <laughs> Just what do you want here, sir? I am here to uphold the honor of the Indians. You can't mistreat the children of a fast horse. What are you talking about? You had the nerve to expel my two little fast horses. I don't believe we have any fast horses in this school. <laughs> what are their first names? Champion and Trigger. Hell. <laughs> I'm talking about my daughters. You probably know them by their pale face names, Alice and Phyllis Harris. Harris? Oh, so you're the father of those two bloodthirsty renegades. <laughs> they ain't bloodthirsty. They ain't, huh? No, they... <laughs> ain't. Fine way for a school principal to talk. Now I know who's been learning my kids to talk bad English. <laughs> I resent that. There ain't nobody can learn them better than me, you know? <laughs> hey, what have I said? Now, will you please get out of I here? I am not leaving till you tell me why you expel my kids. Because they act like savages. They threatened to scalp the janitor. They, they tried to ride the teacher bareback. When I wasn't looking, they shot arrows at me. Arrows? Did they hit you? Why do you think I've been standing up all this time? <laughs> well, you don't have to get mad about it. Those are just childish pranks. After all, the peace will be for peace. Peace? That's plural for papoo. <laughs> Look, us Indians got our right and we're going Oh, stop it. You're no more an Indian than I am. I think you're a phony. That I will not stand for. I'm a full-blooded Indian and I'm proud of my heritage. I'm a real Indian, one of the few genuine Indians All who right, all right, you're an Indian. Now, please stop bothering me and go stand in front of a cigar store. <laughs> Cigar store. Look, buddy, one more crack like that, and I'm going to scrape your insides out and make a canoe out of you. <laughs> Better take the arrow out of him first. He might leak. <laughs> your children are disrupting the entire school. Why, yesterday, that teacher was giving the class a lesson on the Lewis and Clark expedition and how they discovered the Northwest Passage. And your girl... Hold it, hold it. I've just been waiting for you to mention Lewis and Clark. I'd like to discuss them with you. Oh, 
I doubt if you know anything about Lewis and Clark. Are you serious? I happen to have a hat fu- a head full of information. <laughs> oh, you do, eh? All right, just who were Lewis and Clark? Well, answer me, who were they? Wait till I get my hat under a good light. <laughs> <clears throat> Lewis and Clark. Their full names were Meriwether Lewis and Meriwether. <laughs> That's right. Oh, for a minute, I thought that kid was getting hokey. <clears throat> As I was saying, their full names were Meriwether Lewis and Stetson 7 and 1 8 Clark. <laughs> Pearl, you're reading the label. <laughs> Lewis and Clark do? They were explorers. They left St. Louis in 1804, and after many months of travel, they discovered Mulholland Drive. (laughs) Mulholland Drive? That's a lover's lane in the Hollywood Hills. This was a new neck of the woods. (laughs) Today, every fella takes his girl to Mulholland Drive and tries to kiss her, and that's why it's called the Northwest Pass. I don't think that's the way it happened But this version sounds like more fun (laughs) Yeah, it was a spicy little expedition, wasn't it? (laughs) Hey, listen to the rest of this Lewis and Clark whistled at a couple of... Oh, get out! Both of you get out of here! This is the most outrageous misinterpretation of history I've ever heard You don't like it? Harris, get out of this school and don't come back I never want to see your stupid red face again. All right, all right, I'll go. Come on, Elliot. Let's go someplace and get a good reading lamp. What for? I want to finish this story. I got to find out how them two cats made out. They were... <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. Year after year, and again for 53, RCA Victor brings you the big advances in television. Every set in the 1953 line of America's most owned television is now five ways finer. There's the new automatic magic monitor circuit system, improved deep image picture tube, a choice of 42 different combinations of cabinet styles and finishes, the greatest selection in RCA Victor history. And yet, with all these great advances and more, Prices still start at only $199.95. See RCA Victor's great line of 1953 television soon. You'll find many beautiful sets styled to fit perfectly with modern and traditional furniture. A good example is the Dobson, huge 21-inch console television with handsomely grained double doors. See all 23 new models tomorrow. There's one just right for your home. And ask your dealer to show you why... New RCA Victor Television is five ways finer for 53. We're a little late. Good night, um, folks. Good night, everybody. Included in this program transcribed was Joseph Kearns. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. The character Andrew Fasthorse was created by and is used under license from Richard English. Now RCA Victor brings you the famed British orchestra, the Melocrino Strings, in a brand new album of light and delightful music. In this new album, these accomplished continental artists play eight wonderful selections, including Masquerade, Violins in the Night, and the Pink Lady Waltz. For easy-to-listen-to music, ask for this new RCA Victor album, the Melocrino Strings, at your record dealers tomorrow. It's only $2.80 on new 45 extended play records, $3 on long play. Next, hear Theater Guild on the air over NBC.